hello uh, just sitting down for a brew cheers uh, grab yourself a copper um, get your candles lit I don't know how long this is going to be um, but um, I just looked at what this week it is and it's mental health awareness week um, I'm Sally Jack's TV mom and I just wanted to go into a few of the things that I've learned about mental health and suffering myself now first of all I've got to say at the start of the start of the video I'm not medically trained however I've learned an awful lot in the sector of of sort of what caused my mental health. This is not going to be for everybody, but it may be for a percentage that will come through and watch this vlog. And although it's Mental Health Awareness Week and it's making it aware to everybody else, I'm always aware of mental health because I've suffered with it. So, and because I've got so many vlogs that are out, and my mental health was caused by iron deficiency, because there's so many vlogs out there I've put out already, then on a continual basis, every single day, I am answering some sort of message people gone through to Instagram by watching my vlog or messaging me on my vlogs about iron deficiency and about mental health. So even though it's mental health, well, mental awareness, mental health awareness, wait, I'll be if I can say it, even though it's the week, I kind of sit on this every single day. So uh, it doesn't take a week to be broadcast out there for me to know that it's there. However, for people that don't suffer, it also makes them think. So, mm. oh, I love my cup of tea. Um, it's a herbal tea. Now, um, like I said, not everybody's going to be the same as this. And of course, we all talk about how we must talk about it. And it is imperative. Uh, talking helps you um, sometimes realise what you're going through. However, I've also got this other thing. So talking is really, really important. Please never, ever, ever think that I don't think it's not important. It is. But for me, when I was suffering from mental health, and obviously this is this is for me, and this will be a percentage of people that are suffering from mental health issues. Um, it, it, it's great, but it only sort of... I used to look at it when I used to go for therapy and help, and mine was bereavement because I'd lost my father as well. Um, it kind of reset me. So it's almost like your mobile phone not working and you press start and you reset it. I don't know what phone you've got. I've got a Samsung and that's how I work it. So it almost works like a reset button and it reset me. And then the next week I'd need to go and have more um, sort of help with, with talking through it. So it really did help, but it never sorted my problem. And if I hadn't have sorted my problem, I would still be suffering with that now. Now, I believe we're getting greater with mental health but I don't think we're getting greater into looking into what's causing the mental health and after speaking to many people with the iron deficiencies many doctors um many uh, psychiatrists and things like that I learned now whether this is because I've not actually factually looked into it myself and if anybody knows me I'm a little bit like rain man for data and things like that um but a psychiatrist um that has worked for many years with people and helping mental health actually told me and this was last year during the pandemic that um the biggest research and data that's ever been done on antidepressants on somebody being on them was only for 12 weeks now you've got people out there that are on it for 25 years so how do we know what it's causing whether whether it's still working for them, um, whether it's um, sort of the placebo effect eventually, we, we just don't know. And then I'm reading horror stories last night on, um, and, and this is one of the worst research areas ever in history for women and that is the menopause and that, that's that's well known that's well documented uh, that there's not enough research and there's doctors putting um uh, women on antidepressants because they feel that it's not the right time for them to be going through the menopause because the average age of the nhs say it's 51 however how do they know uh, that that's going to be happening to them so a lot of women are going because their hormones are all over the place they're either going through per perimenopause or postmenopausal and doctors are putting them on antidepressants I think, obviously, in some cases, they are detrimental and they are so needed. And in my case, they really helped me, um, but they monged me out. But I couldn't have been on them long term. And when I was on them and I was on sertraline, if anybody wants to know, and I was on 200 milligram a day, which is the strongest dose you can be on, I, um, I couldn't really function. I wasn't really here. Um, I felt like my feelings had all gone. And it would never have sorted my mental health because 
my mental health was being caused by iron deficiency. But sadly, and again, I have to stress, because of the lack of knowledge of doctors, and this is not their fault, this is lack of knowledge in training when they go to medical school. So this is what we need to change because of their lack of training. They didn't know enough about iron deficiency. And so my iron deficiency was never picked up. And if you want to go and have a look at blog vlogs, I've got a whole section under iron and health. In fact, I'm going to move some and actually put them into under the category of um, mental health because I think it's important because a, a lot of people are searching for this now. So again, it won't be for everybody, but one in three women suffer with iron deficiency. And this is not iron deficiency anemia. Anemia is at the end of the line. So imagine... Um, uh, the only way I can I can think of it is that you've got a broken you've got a railway line and you know that there's a break a mile down the road but there's there's uh, breaks in it but it's not completely cut off till a mile down the road and those breaks are telling you that this rail is not very good okay and at the end of the line you're going to drop off so this is what happens so the breaks are the iron deficiency and then the break at the end is the anemia so why are doctors looking for the break at the end and not looking for the fractures and mine i had fractures i had severe iron deficiency and severe iron deficiency, in some cases, the symptoms can be worse than the anemia. But doctors are still looking for their hemoglobin and not looking at the ferritin, which is the iron deficiency. So what do you have with your mental health? Have you got, um, uh, are you losing your hair? Have you got uh, tingling in your fingers? That could be B12 deficiency, so their B12 needs to be looked at. Um, are you feeling low? That could be vitamin D because you're not getting enough because we've been in during the pandemic. Are you um, hydrating yourself enough um, at the moment? Are you suffering with dehydration? That can cause you to be down. And the problem is, if you are down in some of these areas, and I only know these areas, there's probably tons more. Uh, well, there is. There'll be tons more that I don't know about because I've learned so much about this area because I was ill I think to myself how many people are suffering and doctors aren't picking up on this so for instance I went to a doctor in 2020 just before the pandemic hit and it, it wasn't for me it was with somebody else that was suffering because many people asked me to go with them um now and friends and families and, and, and maybe colleagues asked me to go with them and sit in the surgery with them and obviously I would never disclose their cases unless they said that, that, that I could because obviously it's confidential but what I'm going to tell you is I sat in with this person and a doctor that is supposed to know about mental health this isn't a GP this is somebody that we've been referred to um categorically sat there and said iron deficiency does not cause anxiety and panic attacks and depression I was flabbergasted so I'm always prepared. So I brought out my data and I popped it on her desk. Um, I will tell you now um, that she was categorically um, absolutely lacking in knowledge. And uh, we've since, um, uh, well, I've asked to be signed off from her. I do not want to see her because she, she actually factually was so incorrect on so many medical things. And I was proving it with the data. I was proving it with the data, stuff that was in the Lancet and things like that. And this woman was so, I've had seven years of medical training and I'm like, no. So what I'm trying to say is obviously doctors are great. The NHS is great. I don't want to pull anybody down, but we're all human. And it's only what you've learned and what you are taking into your surgery, what you've learned. And there's so much more that we could learn and obviously I'm lucky because I found out what was wrong with me because I went on a rampage and I found out that I was iron deficient um, and I went to the top place uh, and I'll leave all, all everything in the description below I went to the iron clinic in uh, on Harley Street and I dealt with Professor Toby Richards, who was a top iron specialist in the world. I dealt with his right-hand woman, who was Dr. Caitlin Scott, who was absolutely magnificent. I went in for an iron infusion. Um, nine weeks later, I was feeling so much better. Um, 12 weeks to 15 weeks later, I think it's around about that time frame, I was off all my medication. So I'd wean myself off my antidepressants. Now, that's not a good thing, because I didn't go to my doc. It is a good thing, but it's not a good thing. I didn't go to my doctors. I did it on my own. I just slowly brought myself off it, but I brought myself off it. And I I've never needed it again 
I've had a little dip. Um, it would have been a year after. Um, no, it wasn't a year after. It was six months after. And I went and had my bloods done. And I saw that my vitamin D was very low. I got my vitamin D back up and I was absolutely fine. And since then, I've had no problems at all. So mine were panic attacks on live TV. I was having panic attacks in the house. I felt like I was being strangled. I felt like I couldn't go out and socialize. And I'm very much a social butterfly. I was getting severe bruising. I was getting brittle nails. I was getting hair loss. Um, I was getting um restless legs at night, couldn't sleep properly, just um, crying at the drop of the hat. So there was something on, I can't remember what the children need or Comet Relief, and they were doing this advertisement of two women sat at the bus stop and they had their babies and they were talking about mental health and how we need to talk that talk again which is imperative i'm not saying it's not it is imperative to talk don't ever not talk it's really important to talk but they were saying these women need to talk and the, one woman was saying to the other one new mum was saying to the other oh yeah i'm really anxious i can't leave the house i'm suffering with panic attacks etc i'm like wanting to smack the tv and i'm wanting to smack my head because i'm saying why aren't these doctors looking at their eyes levels they just had children so you have one children you're a high chance of having iron deficiency set you have two you're even higher chance you have three oh my gosh the possibilities of you have iron deficiency are very high and how do we know what your state of iron was before you became pregnant iron deficiency can possibly cause fertility problems can possibly cause miscarriage how many people are going through this so this vlog really today I wanted to say to you is get your bloods checked and I've um, I've uh, teamed up with a blood clinic forth with life and they've made a special um, uh, sort of list for that mental health um, and especially for new mums especially for people with heavy heavy period it still is for for, 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 for blokes as well for gentlemen for men um, however you are less likely to suffer with this it's more to, to it's more to do with women however it's well worth basically what i'm trying to say is go and rule it out um because and you need to rule it out the correct way so don't do it right and then fall at the first hurdle so go and get your bloods done you can either go and get it done for free at the doctors but i know obviously everybody's suffering at the moment because of covid so you might not be able to do that and this is the problem i was having is that i was saying go to your gp go and ask for a full blood count but ask for this so when they say full blood count fbc it is not a full blood count <laughs> i just have to categorically say that so you have to ask for certain things and that is ferritin transfer protein saturation serum iron b12 vitamin d and folate and i will leave this in the link below so this should be done for free however if your doctor won't do it because i've had a lot of people come back to me saying their doctors won't do it um they've just been stuck straight on antidepressant then i will leave you a link where you can go and have a blood test it will cost it's private but you can go and do that and i sorted that out because i was being bombarded with so many people going sally my doctor won't do this my doctor won't do this so of course i'm, I'm pulling my hair out thinking how can i help people how can i help people so I sorted this out and then once you've done that please yes you can send those bloods to your doctor if you have them done privately obviously if you haven't them done on the NHS the doctor's going to look at it but please and this is the vital part you do not leave your doctor to read the results of your ferritin your transferritin your serum iron your b12 your folate and your vitamin d you send them well this is the iron clinic so they're going to be more the, the the top three but you send them over to the iron clinic um and i'll leave that all those details in the description below and they will look at those levels now and what happens is your body is already put under stress so if you put your body under any under stress so it's just say you went into the pandemic with iron deficiency and then the pandemic affected you your stress levels can't cope with that because your body is already stressed so your body has to be an optimum sort of uh place before it can cope with any more stresses and strains and this is what i learned from um the top iron uh, deficiency expert in the world um and they were basically saying that the, the troubles that i was having because i was already iron deficient then it was causing me to have more mental health problems it causes you to be breathless it causes you to have uh, extreme fatigue uh, there's 130 436 symptoms something like that that's out there from iron deficiency 
be, but you could also be B12 deficient. So you've got to look at this. You could also be vitamin D deficient. So those levels need to be looked at. Now the iron clinic will look at your iron levels. Um, and I would just urge you, I'm hoping in the future, I'm going to do something. I've already done something on vitamin D, but for B12, I will be doing some vlogs going forward. I just get so enthralled because I work in television and I work full time. And obviously I'm trying to do this as well to raise awareness. And then I also do vlogs for my lifestyle as well. So sometimes it gets a little bit tricky. But the reason why I wanted to do this today was because of mental health awareness a week and to let you know that doctors are fantastic, but they don't know everything. And of course, that was fundamental with my problem. And that knowledge that I've been given has helped so many people so far. My vlogs on YouTube, and again, it's not me, it's the knowledge that I've been given that I've just passed on, I'm just a mere puppet, and has helped so many people. So many people have come off their antidepressants and are a lot better because they've sorted their iron out. So many people have finally found what was wrong with them and gone to get checked. And this is not just in the UK. This is all over the world. I get a lot of messages. Um, some of the biggest countries that I get messages from are Canada, America and India. And those are really probably with the UK, the most prominent countries that I get, I, I speak to uh, people the most going, oh my gosh, this is me, I've been like this for 20 years, or this is me, I've been like this for four years, or this is me, I've now got two children. Um, how come my doctor's not picking up? How come my physician's not picking up? Um, and I would just urge you, if, if your doctor still isn't listening to you, you know those levels are wrong, because then I would ask a, to a, a referral and ask to go and see a hematologist. Or, like me, I had to go and sort it all privately. Now, obviously everybody's in different situations um, with finances and going to sort it out privately can be very difficult. But if you've got iron deficiency, it can lead to all sorts of manner of things and put you at a higher percentage for illnesses you do not want, um, uh, things like, um, you know, it can cause high blood pressure, it can cause hypothyroidism, cause fertility problems, and it can cause a whole manner of things down the road as well as you get older. So the longer you leave it, B12 deficiency could be one of the biggest causes of mental health um, uh, problems as well. So what I'm saying in this vlog is Mental Health Awareness Week. Yes, it's really important. Because if you have had mental health problems, if you have had severe anxiety, where you can't get out of the, the blooming front door, you know about it, it hits you between the eyes, you are scared, you are frightened, you know, losing, starting to lose my hair, it falling out in clumps, coming out in my hands, bruising, I don't know where I've got it from, brittle nails, and sat in that doctor's surgery, week after week after month after month after year after year, going, what is wrong with me? And it were there in my blood and not one of those six seven eight doctors picked it up the obstetrician never picked it up because our guidelines are too wide and they need sorting out and the attention at medical school on this subject needs to be widened and the doctors need to be taught about it i'm so passionate about this it makes me want to cry, it makes me want to stamp, it makes me want to punch the air, it makes me want to grab all the people's shoulders and shake them. How many people in this pandemic have been worse because it hasn't been picked up that they've had the same problem as me? It's got to be a certain percentage of people that will have the same problem as me. Certain percentage of people will be B12 deficient. A certain percent of people will be vitamin D deficient. And we've learned, we've learned what vitamin D is and how important that is for COVID. If I had iron deficiency now, I was suffering with repeated chest infections. I had pneumonia in 2000 and was it 18 or 17? I can't remember what year it was now. It's on one of my vlogs. And you look at that now. If I'd have got COVID, I had no immune system to fight it. So I'd have been worse with iron deficiency. And I categorically know they are looking into data with COVID and iron deficiency. Nothing been brought out yet, but it's being looked at. It is scary that...
this the medical profession needs to get a grip of this and so i urge you i leave everything in the description below you can hear how passionate i am you can hear how I just want to help and I do feel that what's been passed on to me and what I've managed to do in vlogs, that information that's been given and basically I'm just the verbal little puppet has helped so many people so far. So I'm hoping this also helps you. Thank you so much. You can hear my husband in the background. So I'm going to have to sign off now because he's on a business call. But thank you so much um, for listening. Um, I do hope that helps. You leave that message in the, in, the, in, in the comments below and I will try and help you as much as I possibly can. But I do also hope you can join my YouTube channel. It's all not all as serious as this. It's also lifestyle, fun and all different kinds of things that I do with my son and obviously my job in television as well. Love you lots. Please do not suffer. Get it checked. Let's have a look at what the root cause could possibly be. And it could possibly be this. And if it's not, then at least you've ruled it out and you move on to the next thing. Love you lots. And I'm thinking about everybody that is suffering and still suffering because I know exactly how it feels. So all the best. Keep talking. Imperative. But let's try and get down to the bottom of it as well so we can rectify it. I'll see you later.